Do you have PCOS and you struggle with acne? If yes, this video is for you. I will be giving you five different skincare products that will be very useful for you if you have PCOS. Now, before we start, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments if there are any other videos that might be helpful for you and you would like me to make. And let me know if you like this one. Now, let's get straight into the point. As I said, I'm going to be giving you a few advice about PCOS skincare and few different types of products that you could have. Now, I am a big proponent of quite natural skincare and I think it's good for us overall. Uh, and what is more, if you have PCOS, there is a big chance that you have hormonal acne, so you are going to have to treat your skin very, very gently. The first thing that we are going to talk about are cleansers. Now, if you have PCOS and if you have acne, and even if you don't, you should invest in very gentle cleanser. Gentle cleansers are good for all types of skins. Now, I know that you might like this squeaky clean feeling, especially if your skin is very oily, but if you're going to use very harsh cleansers, this actually will work the other way around. So what is it going to do if you strip all the oils from your skin? Your skin is going to overproduce oils in the future. What I would recommend in terms of cleansers is something, as I said, very, very gentle. So you want to avoid the stripping agents, which are called very often SLS. Um, and they are two SLSs, and I'm going to put the names right here. And you want to avoid them in the, um, uh, in the ingredients. And why is that? Those were actually originally made to clean the factory machines from oils. So they're very, very harsh for your skin and they can actually further irritate it. Now think about the fact that if you have acne, if you have blemishes, those are very often open wounds. So the last thing you want is irritate them further. So SLS have to go. Of course, try to avoid um, very toxic ingredients like parabens and pegs as well. And I am not a big proponent with actually face washes that have a lot of active ingredients like for example salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is great but if you just put it on your skin for a minute when you're washing your face it is not gonna do much good. Now another thing that I want you to think about is um, why do we buy something that is called face wash, body wash, hair wash? Very often especially if you're buying natural things in this realm they have exactly same ingredients in exactly same ratios. So these are just gentle cleansing agents. So very often if you have very cleansing shower gel, you can use it as a gentle shampoo as well. And it has been very often where I have bought super sensitive body wash and I have used it for everything. So as a face wash, as a hair wash and as a body wash. And if you're looking to save money, this is the way to go as well. But if you want one gentle cleanser for your skin, I would recommend Cetaphil. It is micellar cleanser, so it's going to be very gentle for your skin and you can use it as well to take off your makeup. Now, you won't get squeaky clean feeling, but it will cleanse your skin in a very gentle way. Point number two is exfoliating. Now, again, sensitive skin, probably acne, you are not going to want to scrub on your skin to aggravate it even more. So forget about, I don't know, some sort of physical peels, maybe harsh brushes, maybe harsh sponges and stuff like that. That is going out. Another thing is that you won't want in the same kind of thinking, you don't want something that is very greedy, very harsh peels. Like I remember back in the day, they used to use like apricot um, kernels, are they called, that were, um, were actually ground and they were very, very abrasive for your skin, which just further creates more wounds on your skin and makes it um, even more irritated. So if it goes to exfoliating, if you feel a need to exfoliate, or maybe you see that your skin is very, very thick um, and you just feel that you have a lot of that skin, use chemical peels. And I have mentioned the ordinary chemical peel before. I absolutely love it and I'm sticking with it because I tried so many different before. And this is the one that worked the best for me. 
This is not sponsored, by the way. Uh, the other thing that you will actually find if you, for example, are going to some spa uh, with your sensitive skin is that they're gonna recommend you mandelic acid. And mandelic acid is good for everybody. This is also something that you might want to use. And again, I'm gonna link all of them down below. These are Amazon links. Uh, so you can use them straight away and uh, you will support my channel at the same time. You don't have to use them, but you can. Now, the other thing that you might want to use is exfoliating in terms of toner. Uh, I know that toning is a completely different step, uh, but what I really like is glycol acid again from the ordinary I love the ordinary because they're very simple clean active ingredients that you can adapt to your skin now what I want you to keep in mind that the advice that I'm giving you is very general so you are gonna have to try a few things and see what works for your skin because every skin is a little bit different but these are the general guidelines so try glycolic acid if your skin is already used to acids for example now, if you want something that is gonna prevent clogging of the pores, this is also something that is kind of like a gentle peel. Uh, you might wanna try retinoids, and there are retinoids that you can get there without prescription, very easy, light ones again from the ordinary. Um, there is something that in US you can get without prescription, which is differin, which I absolutely love. This is a gel, uh, it's adapalen, adapalenum, I don't know uh, how to pronounce that, but um, this is the active ingredient, this is retinoid, so again, if you suffer from a, like a little, um, those white bumps uh, or just bumps all over your skin clogged pores this is going to be something that you might want to use however if you're using retinoids you have to keep in mind that you really shouldn't be going out and sunbathing because they will make your skin very very thin so you will be very very prone not only to sunburn but to sunspots so this is something to consider now another thing uh, could be salicylic acid and from what I know salicylic acid you can use if you're going to be exposed to the sun so for me living in a very very warm climate on Tenerife and Canary Islands. Uh, this is a very good alternative. And you can uh, actually find, if you're quite a lazy person, as I sometimes am when I'm very busy, you can find hydrating cream with salicylic acid in it. So it will do double thing. It will hydrate your skin, but it will also make sure that your pores are unclogged. Light hydration is gonna be point number four. Now, why am I saying light? Because very often um, we use a little bit too heavy things. And if your skin is prone to clogging, you are gonna want something that has very small molecules, which usually just feels lighter as well. So safe bets, um, not saying that you cannot use anything heavier, but the safest bet will be gel, sort of gel uh, hydrator. Now I used to have back in the day, um, the Origins uh, Ginseng Gen Cleanser, which I absolutely loved and it smelled amazing. It is expensive, I'm not gonna lie, but if you want to pamper yourself and and you like something that smells and feels good, that is very good. If you're using something or you avoid using perfume and scents, for example, which are also can be irritants to your skin, you can use something like the ordinary moisturizing factors that are equally fantastic. Uh, I found something that is perfumed again, but because uh, during the time when we couldn't go out, I was a little bit, little bit desperate. I found this Garnier Bio. I don't know if it's available in US or in UK, but I think it is. And it's quite good, to be honest. It smells quite strongly, uh, but it has lemongrass and it has salicylic acid in it and it unclogs the pores. Um, you know, it's not the best thing in the world, but if your skin clogs easy and you're searching for something on a budget, that is a great alternative. And the fifth thing is gonna be oils. Now, not everybody will suit oils, and if you have super oily skin, you might never find the need to use them. So if you feel the need to hydrate a little bit more after you've been hydrating with your gel cleanser, oils are gonna be great alternative. However, you should choose the right type of oils. Again, the safest, doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to use other ones, are the ones that have very, very small molecules. So what I found that works for me is rosehip oil and jojoba jojoba oil, um, however you read this. And those have quite small molecules, so they're recommended for people that have skin problems like acne as well. So you might want to try these two. Again, for myself, if I use them every day, I start getting clogged pores, but you can mix them up in your creams two, three times a week, or maybe you want to use them as a little bit of mask, massage them in and get this extra hydration. This will depend again on your skin, so listen to your skin. If your skin is super oily and you don't feel the need to use oils, don't. Now, 
These were the five different main things that you need for your PCOS skincare and for your acne skincare. Now I want to give you two extras um, that I think you might want to try, especially if your skin is very, very sensitive. So one point is gonna be soothing creams. Now, if you have a lot of inflammation in your skin, you might want something that reduces this inflammation a little bit. Now, I'm gonna be fully transparent and say that the products that I'm gonna be talking about in both of those points are products of a company that I used to work for. I have super sensitive skin, as you know, PCOS, acne and so on, which now is cured after years, after 18 years. Um, but I found this company to work very, very well. And Again, thinking about the, um, the products from a little bit different point of view and reading the ingredients before reading what they're made for, you will actually understand why I recommend this. Now, this company is, is a company that produces um, products for, um, for sun exposure. And one of these products is called Recovery Gel, and this is actually made for sunburns. But what it has, it has aloe vera, and it has tea tree and it has an array of other ingredients that are very, very soothing for your skin. So what I used to do, I used to use it when I had blemishes and it would kill inflammation a little bit. I use it for cuts, I use it for sunburn, I use it for all sorts of skin irritations and rashes that I ever, ever had. And if you have something itchy as well on your skin, this is a great thing. Again, gonna link it below, I'm not getting anything out of it. I just really, really love the product. So again, even if you burn your hand in the oven, you can put it. So, so this is gonna be something that's gonna soothe your skin. Now, another product uh, that I really, really love um, is Aloe Rose Hip Lotion. Now, this is again, fully natural product. So that's why I love them so much and that's why I felt good back in the day selling them. Uh, so this has aloe vera as your basic ingredient. This has rose hip oil in it, but it has also an array of different oils. Now, for me, I can use it to soothe my skin, but again, I can't use it every day because it has shea butter in it and shea butter clogs my pores because it has bigger molecules. So this is something to think about. But what I love about this product is again, you buy one product and you can use it for your hair, you can use it for your face and you can use it for your body. Um, as a hand cream, as a foot cream, as a, it, it really, really softens the skin and it doesn't have any, any bad ingredients in it. Mm, and it's very, very versatile product, even for people with psoriasis. Um, another thing also from the same company is to take a look at your sun care. Um, and if you are the person who is using uh, sun protection every day, which I know we are recommended, I, I will admit I'm not very good at it and I love being in the sun and I will probably have a lot of sun damage in the future. Uh, but if we are talking about sun care and protecting your skin from the sun, make sure that you don't have any clogging ingredients. Now, um, very often in sun creams, you will find paraffin that is basically Vaseline, uh, just like in a melted form. So this will clog your pores a lot. For myself, I noticed that when I was suffering from acne, it was always getting worse during holiday and I could never figure it out until I figured out that it was sun creams. So again, the same company offers um, they have like sun creams that are zinc based, uh, so zinc is natural thing, right? It's a physical sunscreen. They're a bit chalky, they're a bit thicker, uh, but I would definitely recommend them because they have the same base as the yellow I mentioned to you before. Um, I feel a little bit weird talking about that, but I really, really love those products and I noticed that because actually zinc is also anti-inflammatory, um, it actually even helps my acne instead of making it worse. Um, so I would definitely recommend them and I will link them down below. Again, I'm not getting anything out of it. Uh, and I am sure that there are a lot of different companies that have fully natural products um, that are just physical sunscreens. So take a look at that, uh, but keep that in mind. Maybe go to your local health store and check. Now, the, another tip <laughs> is gonna be to check your makeup for comedogenic substances and there's plenty of websites where you can check that and check if it doesn't have anything that might clog your makeup. Maybe journal a little bit or at least keep it in mind like, oh, if I use that foundation, that gets worse. If I use this one, it's okay and so on and so forth because of course the base of foundations are also gonna be creams. So it also might be a little bit of Vaseline, a little bit of paraffin, a little bit of wax a little bit of silicones that might actually clog your pores. So keep that in mind. Now, one, um, one extra tip that actually can help you find all of those stuff is to use apps. I have an, an app called Yuka, again, not sponsored, 
um, that I'm using when I'm going to the health store. Now it helps me scan the code and it helps me to see um, which ingredients that it, does it have that might be good or harmful for my skin. Um, but there's plenty of similar apps, so make sure that you find some, some that is local for you, because I'm not sure if this app is just European or is it um, for the whole world. But find ingredient search app, and where, whenever you are in the store, if you don't want to learn a lot about ingredients, just scan the code and it will tell you um, what sorts of dangers it might be, because it might tell you, okay, this is irritant, this is allergen, but this is comedogenic, so it's not good for, uh, for acne prone skin. So one pro advice, and that is it. Let me know in the comments if you found that advice useful. Are you using any of these products? And make sure that you check the links if you want to purchase them on Amazon. Uh, and make sure you like, subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified about my future videos. And let's stay in touch. See you soon.